Module 7, Strategy, Delivery, and Commissioning. Outline, Definition and Purpose of Contract Management, Contract Management Framework, Contract Administration Planning, Establishment and Execution, Relationship Management, Performance Management, the construction phase, delivering and commissioning, main stages of the construction phase, performance and risk monitoring, change management in the construction phase, relationship management, claims management in the construction phase, dealing with the private sector's underperformance and non-compliance, issues management procedures, disputes resolution procedures, knowledge management and succession plan. Definition and purpose of contract management. So the PPP contract as in signed. What's next? Contract management. Contract management is defined as a process that enables both parties in a contract to meet their respective obligations in order to deliver the objectives required from the PPP contract. PPP contract management is one of the most important aspects of PPP delivery. It is a long process which begins even before contract signature and ends at the end of office. It can support the long-term success of the project in line with the agreed contract terms. But if managed poorly, it can have adverse effects and may result in negative financial, economic, and social impact for project stakeholders. Effective contract management requires several tasks which fall outside the purview of the PPP contract, but are essential to the success of the project. These include the following, addressing the various needs, concerns, and expectations of the stakeholders in executing the project, establishing, maintaining, and carrying out dynamic stakeholder communications, managing stakeholders' efforts in meeting project requirements, and adequately communicating project deliverables to these stakeholders to improve their buy-in and engagement. Contract management generally aims to, to do the following. Services are delivered continuously and to a high standard in accordance with the contract and payment or penalties are made accordingly. Contractual responsibilities and risk allocations are maintained in practice and the government's responsibility and risk managed efficiently. Changes in the external environment, both risk and opportunities are supported and acted on effectively. And the efficiency expectations of the contract are achieved and the hand back provision in the contract are met. Sound contract management is therefore crucial to the success of a PPP. The contract management framework. Contract management comprises multiple activities that are grouped into the following four main components. Establishing governance and the contract management team, planning, establishing and executing contract administration, relationship management and performance management. Contract Management Framework, Component 1. Establishing Governance and Contract Management Team. Area that describes when the contract management team should be set up, the structure of the team, the roles and responsibility of the staff involved, and any training needs identified. When should contract management commence? Determining the contract management team structure, determining and securing the resources required for contract management, job profiles, skills, and competencies required for contract management, identifying the initial and ongoing training requirements, ensuring continuity of the contract management function. Components two, contract administration. Monitors, reports, and ensures that the obligations and responsibilities defined under the contract are met, monitors and manages underperformance, risk, payment of the unitary charge, and any variations defined under the contract or not reflected in the contract so that value for money and continuous improvement are achieved. 
the payment mechanisms, dealing with disputes, variations to the contracts, benchmarking and market testing, contract administration checklist, contract, contract administration manual. Component three, relationship management. A continuous level of engagement is maintained between the public and private partner, it establishes relationships, communication channels and systems, and the active support of an announcement of them throughout the life of the project so that a sustainable partnership of trust and respect is maintained. Defining communication protocols, routes and systems, development of partnership protocols and behaviors, overcoming relationship difficulties, developing successful relationships, practical problem and dispute re resolution, managing relationships checklist. Component four, performance management. Assesses whether the services being delivered by the service provider meets the required standards, whether remedial measures are effective, and whether there are any trends evident in the provision of the services. Why should service performance be monitored and measured? The fundamentals of performance measurement, working with the service provider to mobilize services, overcoming relationship difficulties, monthly performance monitoring processes and payments, monitoring the provision of the services, managing relationships checklists, tools for measuring performance, help desk. the role and responsibilities of the private partner. Set up a quality management system, QMS, including a management information system, MIS, through which the process and procedure of documentation, issuing and monitoring of service and performance is recorded. Ensure the, IM, the MIS is well-designed to ensure that performance can be measured and monitored using the information technology tools, and that these IT tools generate reliable, accurate data on a regular basis, which will be part of the complete QMS. The role and responsibilities of the government. The success of a PPP project greatly depends on the monitoring and management of the project by the government. After the PPP contract has been signed, Responsibility for contract management will normally be given to the government. Responsibility of the government include the following. Establish a competent contract management team. Clearly define roles and responsibilities of its contract management team. Monitor the project delivery. Manage changes permitted under the PPP contract. Manage changes not provided for in the PPP contract and provide for dispute resolution. Roles of the contract management team. The contract management team has primary and secondary roles within the government domain. The primary roles relate to the PPP contract itself and the oversight exercise over the private partner in the achievement of the project objectives and VFM. These include acting as a contractual representative of the government in performing obligations and enforcing the rights of the government in the PPP contract. Liaison with the private partner in achieving the project objectives. Monitoring the performance of the private partner in providing the services specified in the PPP contract. Managing any disputes that arises under the PPP contract. The secondary roles of the contract management team are generally the following. To liaise with and promote cooperation between governmental structures in all spheres of government in relation to the project. To monitor the policy and legislative environment of the project. To enhance the integration of the projects with other public services, programs, and projects. Contract administration, planning, establishment, and execution. 
proper planning and establishment of administrative process requires the government to undertake the following activities. Formalize management responsibilities for transition between the project stages. Monitor project delivery, service outputs, and contract performance. Manage change and variations. Maintain the integrity of the contract. Promote strong working relationships with the project parties. Resolve project issues and dispute fairly and efficiently and advocate for regular contracts and project reviews to ensure continuous improvement. Managing administrative processes also necessitates the development of a contract management manual in which all relevant policies and procedures are provided. The manual should be written in plain language and needs to explain what is expected from the government with respect to its duties and obligations, as well as what needs to be done in order to successfully monitor the private partner's progress and delivery. NB, the manual should never be substituted for the contract itself. It must build on the contract management plan and must also be practical and relevant to both the day-to-day -day and the longer-term management of the project contract. Management Information Systems, MIS, in a PPP environment. The objective of a sound MIS solution is to ensure that performance can be measured and monitored using the MIS, and that the MIS generates reliable and accurate data on a regular basis. The government would need to ensure that there is full consistency between the contractual performance of the private partner and the MIS interfaces that will be adopted. MIS specifications must be accessible to the government. Throughout the life of the contract, discussed during the procurement stage, in particular MIS solutions, the bidders are planning to use and the extent to which they can be shared with the contracting authority designed with appropriate MIS interfaces, such as dedicated web portals for the government. Relationship management. It is all about relationships. PPPs, by their very nature, span a very long time frame. They are complex and involve multiple stakeholders, including the private party lenders, SPV shareholders, end users, regulators, legislative and executive hands of the government, and wider communities. Effective communication is the key to establishing a collaborative working relationship. Poor or unsatisfactory communication and cooperation can lead to a reduction in trust. The successful management of the relationships between the project and a stakeholder is key to a successful project outcome. It is equally important to maintain a good relationship with communities in which a project is implemented. Inadequate consultation of stakeholders can lead to delays in the implementation of the project or make contract management challenging. It can lead to certain risks being underestimated. It could also limit the ability of both the government and the private partner to mitigate certain sensitive risks, such as public objection to related fees. Performance management. Service performance should be monitored and measured in order to ensure that contractual compliance is achieved and demonstrated. Management of service performance is fundamental to the PPP contract as it is through this process that payments to the private party are calculated and any deductions made. It is vital that there is a sound understanding of the above relationship as it impacts the requirements in the output specification, 
the performance measurement system, and the method for making deductions for poor performance are set out in the payment mechanism. The construction fees, delivering and commissioning. The construction phase is a phase during which the construction contractor and subcontractors engaged by the private partner begin construction, testing, and commissioning of the different components of the project according to an implementation schedule. At this stage, the major responsibility related to the implementation take task lies with the private partner. However, a management process by the government needs to be, to be in place from the outset to ensure timely completion and satisfactory operation. Nonetheless, it is important that the government have a clear understanding of the relationship of the main components of construction, which are time, quality, and cost of an asset. In order for the construction phase to commence and run smoothly through to the delivery and commissioning phase, several points need to be considered and actioned by the government. Take steps to resolve differences in the interpretation of the output specification. Monitor the progress of project delivery and the quality of work. Oversee the conduct of required tests, evaluate the test results and take decisions as required. Consider variations to the output specifications, inspect equipment to be installed, and satisfy and provide approvals as may be needed under the contract. Several studies show that some PPPs were cancelled during the construction phase due to the lack of or a poorly executed contract management function. Reasons for failure include the following. Capability. The government did not possess the experience, technical skills, or resources to manage its obligations associated with a long-term active partnership with private sector providers. Process. The government failed to establish streamlined, transparent procedures for daily liaison with its private sector partners. The bureaucracy was slow and resistant, and projects were labored by extended negotiation periods and delays in achieving sign of oversight. There were existing deficiencies in the government's project supervision and control procedures, which could not be cured simply by moving from traditional procurement to PPPs. Expectations. The government's expectation of who is responsible for what and what has to be delivered by when failed to match the understanding by the private sector. Main stages of the construction phase. The construction phase, phase one, project site setup and permit clearance. The government will make land in most cases available to the private partner. The private partner will manage the operation and maintenance of the land and infrastructure. Land and over processes must be detailed in the PPP contract. Phase two, project design. The private partner must be solely responsible for the design. The private partner assumes the responsibility for identifying and obtaining all design and construction related consents. The contract may prohibit the private partner from proceeding with construction until the government gives its approval to move forward following its review of the design. Phase three, project construction. The construction contractor may split the work into phases or smaller packages in order to achieve its milestones. The main contractor will retain responsibility for the quality of all work and for coordination of subcontractor activities. The most work intensive period is in the middle of the phase where all of the work packages are delivered. Phase four, commissioning and hand over to the operations team. Assets must be tested by the independent certifier or engineer or construction inspector or engineer. If the performance tells fail, 
the private partner must remedy such defects in order to obtain the completion certificate. The completion certificate is issued by the independent certifier and is contractual evidence that the construction phase is complete. Performance and risk monitoring. Performance monitoring is conducted by the government primarily through the contract management team, although other affected agencies and departments may also be involved to check that the private partner has adequate systems, policies, procedures, and resources in place to perform the specific performance related obligations set out in the PPP contract, a functional quality assurance system in place to do self-monitoring and achieve the required outputs to meet the specification. Performance and risk monitoring. The contract management team must undertake a range of regular monitoring tasks during the construction phase, including monitoring against the schedule, monitoring against the scope and any agreed variations, monitoring performance and compliance with applicable laws quality control and materials monitoring, daily relationship monitoring with the private partner and stakeholder reporting and management. The framework for performance monitoring will be set out in each PPP contract. In the operations phase, the performance monitoring is often linked to the penalty regime, e.g. financial penalties or some form of accrual of points that could lead to a termination. For an efficient performance monitoring, the government must be aware at all relevant times of the development and progress of the project. The private partner must be instructed by the government to maintain communication and to report on progress against the construction schedule. Progress reporting should include information on the progress of the works notice of any anticipated delays, the program for managing any delays, and other issues of importance during construction. Approval of the scheduled milestone is usually done by an independent certifier who will issue work completion, practical completion, and final completion certificates. Quality assessment implemented by a private partner a private partner has several obligations towards the government when dealing with quality management. These include quality management system, QMS planning, which is a process for the development of an overall identifier, identifies those processes, procedures, and other documents that ensure effective operations and control over the entire project execution program. QMS development, which involves the development of the QMS processes, procedures, as well as preparation for their implementation. QMS implementation, which involves the active incorporation of the quality management project plan element into the workflow process. QMS reporting, which involves reporting on how well a quality requirement is being met or how well a quality process is performing. QMS monitoring, which establishes, maintains, and implements a program to control and minimize non-conformance. Quality assessment reviewed by the government. Monitoring management quality is difficult. Thus, the government must ensure that the designated contract director has the required skills of capacity to regularly monitor the quality of the private partner's management and operating personnel, looking for weaknesses or trends that may provide an early indication of trouble ahead. Change management in the construction phase. Changes are bound to happen during the construction phase. It is not a bad thing. However, it is critical to ensure that the PPP contract will set out the events in which the changes are allowed under the contract. It is also important that the government's contract management procedures set out the necessary logistical 
and administrative details, such as the person to whom a request for a change must be sent, the person who will assess the impact of the proposed change, the persons authorized to agree to a change on behalf of the government and private partner, and the person responsible for overseeing and verifying the implementation of the change. The following changes are generally noted during the construction phase. Changes in ownership at private partners level, changes in the scope of works may be initiated by private partner, by the government, or caused by an external event. The general risk of implementing the PPP contract lies with the private partner. However, in cases of force majeure, the PPP contract must specify the way such events are notified between the parties. The contract also needs to be clearly indicate the extent that such an event will result in a variation to the PPP contract. Amendment and renegotiation of PPP contracts. Remember, changes occur. In such cases, amendments must be made and contracts may have to be renegotiated. There are very few, if any, absolute prohibitions on amendments or PPP agreements in any jurisdiction with significant PPP projects. The European Union, EU, as one of the most regulated procurement environments, and may be taken as a reasonable representative of good practice on the subject of renegotiation of a concession agreement. While some renegotiations are efficient, many are opportunistic and should be strongly discouraged. Financial restructuring. A project facing financial difficulties may require financial restructuring as follows. The PPP contract will be auctioned by the government whereby a new bidder will pay the actual worth of the project and then continue to provide the service. This is the preferred method of dealing with such projects. Amendments to the finance document or conversion of debt to equity. Finance document amendments may include extended maturity dates, revised interest rates, and amendment financial covenants, among others. Claims management in the construction phase. Claims management allows claims and potential claims to be identified and evaluated. By assessing their merits early on, claims or potential claims can be avoided or resolved quickly. The likelihood of some form of claim occurring increases with the degree of involvement of the government in the running and financing of the PPP. The contract management team is critical in ensuring the compliance of the government and correctly documenting all events in meeting such obligations. The private party is best positioned to prevent claims arising by using the form of contract as well as projects and quality management tools to identify and mitigate disputes and claims proactively. process of evaluating a claim, identification, determining the source of potential claim, for example, design error or omission, scope gap, documentation conflict, hidden and different site conditions, abnormal weather, and so on. Legal compliance check, determine whether or not the claim has any basis in the PPP contract or in law, Consult legal resources on the matter. Evaluate merit. Determine potential success of claims based on established legal precedent and contract documentation. Evaluate magnitude. Determine worst case and best case magnitude from each party's perspective. Strategy development. This may range from a settlement agreement to following the dispute resolution process. Dealing with extension. Dealing with time extension. The private partner will have a limited set of events for which it can claim to extend the completion date by which the asset must be created, commissioned, and operated, extend the expiry of the PPP contract, 
These events will be set out in the PPP contract and relate to matters outside the control of the private partner. Allowing an extension of time in these circumstances enables the project to continue with the private partner remaining incentivized to complete the project. The role of the contract management team in the government is to ensure that the basis for granting such an extension meets the criteria in the PPP contract in basis of fact and in terms of compliance with procedures set out therein. Claims management in the construction phase. Dealing with force major events. Force major events are limited set of events which may arise during the term of the PPP contract through no fault of either party. These are best managed by the private partner. These events are, by definition, unusual and rare events, and the contract management team should deal with these as exceptions. Thus, the focus should be on avoiding termination by the private partner mitigating the effects, and if required, obtaining support from the lenders to defer payment until such time as the project is stable again. Dealing with the private sector's underperformance and non-compliance during the construction phase. Monitoring the performance of the private partner is a primary function of the contract management team of the government. During the term of the PPP contract, it is almost certain that the private party will not meet the required standards and not comply with the specifications in the PPP contract. Non-compliance by the private partner decreases the public benefit or value for money in the PPP, decreasing the quality or quantity of services offered to the public. When dealing with underperformance and non-compliance in the construction phase, the issue is not the standard of services provided, but rather the time taken to complete the assets and the quality of the assets on completion. Issues management procedures. Conflicts typically occur within a contract when a problem occurs. Therefore, a key aspect of a partnering relationship is the resolution of problems quickly, efficiently, and without disputes. This can be achieved through the following mechanisms documented discussion and formal note of agreement, annexing the contractual change mechanism so that the issue does not affect the overall affordability of the project. Agreed arrangements for change to, be, to the procuring authority's performance requirements and the private party's method statements. Regular scheduled meetings with attendance by key stakeholders from both parties. Dispute resolution procedures. A wide range of dispute settlement mechanisms should be considered to avoid court cases that may be both lengthy and costly. Dispute resolution mechanisms that are generally used worldwide include the following sector regulator, judicial system, mediation, dispute resolution board, comprising an independent expert, or better and more frequently, a panel of experts, arbitration. Domestic arbitration or international arbitration, for example, through the International Chamber of Commerce, ICC, or the International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes, ICSID. To limit the risk of dispute, the parties to the PPP contract should ensure that the wording of the contract is as clear as possible and develop and maintain a constructive partnership relationship. The PPP contract should also include a formal dispute resolution process, which ideally should be clear and simple to avoid tension to arise from the interpretation of the dispute resolution procedure and to avoid unnecessary expense, either direct, include a hierarchy of resolution procedures. That is from an internal committee for dialogue between the parties, to an external expert opinion or mediation. And finally, 
appreciation or court proceedings. Knowledge management and succession planning. PPP projects generate a large amount of information and data, which must be managed by the private partner and the government throughout the project life. Knowledge management allows to ensure the continuity of knowledge throughout the life of the project and to assist the contract management team in meeting legislative and contractual requirements. It is important to develop a knowledge management strategy, KMS, which includes a set of specific tasks such as receiving, collecting, and recording the meaningful information, storing and sharing the information, information security, and maintaining and disposing of information. Implementing and managing knowledge and information. This requires dedicated personnel who will actively manage documentation using an appropriate system. Measuring knowledge management involves checking whether the relevant documentation is easily retrievable and identifiable. Thus, it is important to ascertain whether the information and data collected is recent and accurate. The process of obtaining, storing, sharing, and disposing of the data being successfully implemented, the information and data is submitted and transferred between stakeholders in the appropriate form and at the appropriate time. Succession planning is crucial activity in the PPP process. It must be done at the time of writing the contract management manual. It is important that the processes for transferring knowledge from staff, existing the project to new staff, be recorded to ensure institutional memory is well kept. The government and private partner must ensure that at any given time, the transfer of knowledge takes place and that lessons learned are logged, which will assist new staff in becoming familiar and gaining experience with the project. Implementing succession plans must follow several procedures. Accompany the exit of old personnel by the transfer of a clear and documented history of the project, as well as factual trail of all current issues and details to inform new personnel. Train all new personnel on contract administration and on the contract management manual to ensure that all the policies and procedures are clear and implemented in the same manner by the new personnel. In addition, a lot of lessons learned needs to be kept and updated in order for new personnel to familiarize themselves with these potential orders. Sample of a contract management manual outline. So European PPP Expertise Center. Introduction, purpose of the document, background to the project or contract, origin, commercial structure and objectives, governance, boards and committees, communication and information processes, decision-making processes, delegated powers, stakeholder management, including end users, structure of authority team, organization chart, roles and responsibilities, key contracts, Structure of private partner. Organization charts, roles and responsibility, key contract. Construction period management. Meeting, type, purpose, frequency, attendance, outputs, key specification requirements, data collection, validation and recording, reporting, accounting aspects, in bracket, especially balance sheet treatment risk management process, managing changes, service period management, meetings, type, purpose, frequency, attendance, outputs, key specification requirements, performance targets, help desk, data collection, validation and recording, reporting, risk management process, payment mechanism and process, including budgetary and accounting aspects, reviews, managing changes, dispute resolution. Questions, comments, suggestions. Thank you. Participants are encouraged to kindly post their questions 
comments and contributions on the dedicated course discussion board. Thank you for your time. <laughs>